If you're a fan of the old money aesthetic, you might have seen a lot of this online. But avoiding visible logos or branding when cultivating an old money aesthetic can be a very wise decision. The old money style reflects a timeless and sophisticated approach to fashion. It's about being refined and elegant, but in an understated way. It prioritizes quality, tradition, and subtlety over flashy displays of wealth. So in this video, I'm going to give you several reasons why avoiding logos and branding is the way to go if you want to achieve the old money aesthetic. And I'll tell you what to look for instead when choosing your clothes, and some good places to buy high quality garments without any visible logos. Reason number one not to wear logos is that it shows a level of subtle confidence. Old money style is about projecting confidence without the need for external validation via brands. Choosing clothes without a visible logo communicates a kind of quiet self-assuredness. You're relying on your own taste for style and the quality of the garments rather than just external labels. And the best thing when you forget about logos is that you can just focus on the quality of the clothes instead. The old money lifestyle values materials and craftsmanship. And just because a garment has a designer logo on it, that's absolutely no guarantee of quality. In fact, the opposite is often true. Take a look, for example, at Ralph Lauren. They have the most affordable range, the Polo range, which has the logo over everything. On the other hand, take a look at the most expensive and their highest quality range, which is the purple label, and you'll see there are absolutely no logos in sight. So when you're choosing clothes, you want to prioritize the intrinsic value of the garment instead. That means the quality of the fabric, the fit, and the design. And of course, the way it makes you feel. So when you take the focus away from the logos, then you can focus on what really matters. Now, logos and branding are often tied to fashion trends that come and go. But the old money aesthetic is about creating a timeless style that remains relevant across the generations. Certain brands are the hottest thing one minute and the least hot the next. I'll give you a couple of examples of brands that have fallen from grace. Most lately, Balenciaga went from being a top tier celebrity brand to a public disgrace after they released an ad campaign showing children's teddy bears wearing BDSM gear. A more classic example is Slazenger. This was considered a top tier sporting attire brand and was even worn by James Bond in the movie Goldfinger. But these days, their products are most commonly found in the discount bins of cheap sports stores. So you see how attaching a logo to a garment can make it subject to the misfortunes of fashion in a short space of time. But having no logos creates a classic and enduring look. Old money style is rooted in tradition and heritage. By avoiding visible logos, you demonstrate a respect for well-established brands and the enduring craftsmanship that has withstood the test of time. Your style becomes a nod to the traditions of menswear, not just one particular manufacturer. Next up, people in old money circles often value privacy and discretion. They care more about mystery and subtlety than trying to be seen as a somebody. It's the same as choosing a black S-Class Mercedes over a yellow Lamborghini. So unlike new money people, the last thing they want to do is flaunt their wealth with designer logos. Your style should be more about self-expression than trying to align yourself with one particular brand. Along the same lines, the old money lifestyle is very anti-consumerist. They believe in preserving what they have rather than just getting rid of stuff and buying new things all the time. So these people dislike money for its own sake especially flashy displays of wealth. So by choosing clothes without visible logos, you're distancing yourself from consumerist culture. You're no longer trying to keep up with the Joneses or the Kardashians for that matter. Instead, you can take a more nuanced approach and a more sophisticated way to achieve your personal style. Logos can also limit the versatility of your wardrobe by making pieces easily identifiable and potentially pigeonholing them into a specific outfit. You don't want to be the guy who's always wearing his Ralph Lauren t-shirt, but there's nothing wrong with being the guy who always wears a well-fitting plain white t-shirt. Without visible branding, you have a much greater variety of mix and match possibilities. Obviously, the bigger the logo, the more the versatility is reduced. A white button-down shirt with a small polo horse is gonna be much more versatile than a hoodie with the logo all across the chest. And finally, but maybe most importantly, when you avoid logos, you have the freedom to create your own vision and your own self-expression with your style. If you choose clothes for the logo's sake, you're buying into somebody else's vision. But old money style encourages personal expression. This can be through the timeless silhouettes, well-chosen fabrics, and subtle details that make all these different garments that you've put together truly your own style. 
and it allows your personality to shine without the need for overt branding. So what should you look for when buying clothes without logos? The most important thing is obviously that you just like the look of the piece. I generally know what I'm looking for before I even go shopping. I recommend that you have an aesthetic in mind and you visualize the piece that you're trying to find and then try and get the closest match you can, whether that's online or in person. The second thing I look for is the fabric. I rarely buy anything made of polyester or other synthetic fabrics. The reason why is these fabrics just don't last a very long time and they don't feel as good on your skin. They also just look quite cheap and they don't have the same texture or drape that a natural fabric would have. What fabric you want to buy depends on the piece and the season that you're wearing it for. For example, with dress shirts, you generally want 100% cotton, but I like 100% linen for my casual shirts in the summer. For suits, you generally want 100% wool, but you might also find high quality cashmere blends or a cotton or linen suit in the summer. You'll be able to find information about the fabric of the garment by checking the care label or reading the product description online. And the third thing I look for is fit. Well, fit is very important, but I leave it till last because it's the only thing that you can really change after you've bought the garment. It's very rare that a dress shirt or a pair of pants will fit me right off the rack, but I'm confident I can take that to a friend or a tailor who can fix it for me. So here are some good places to buy clothes with no logos. The great news is there are many places these days where you can buy high quality clothes without breaking the bank. An old classic is Brooks Brothers. This brand has dressed pretty much every US president from Abraham Lincoln up to Joe Biden. They use high quality fabrics and have elegant designs that fit perfectly with the old money aesthetic. They do have some clothes with a subtle golden fleece logo, but this is easily avoided. I wear a lot of Brooks Brothers, including this jacket right now, and none of it has visible logos. Another store I like is Suit Supply. They don't have any clothes with logos, as far as I'm aware. Instead, the focus is on the quality of the fabric and the stylish designs. So whatever style you're going for, Suit Supply will have something for you. And a third, more underrated place to buy high quality garments is Spear and Mackay. This is a Canada-based company that I think will be a lot more well-known if they just upped their marketing a little. Their styles are very classic and very old money. And I can tell you that they value quality first and keep their prices very reasonable. If you want to see some of my favorite pieces from these brands, including what I'm wearing today, then check out the link in the description to my shop my page, where you'll be able to view product links for all of those different items. Now, finally, I want to address this. Are there any exceptions to my no logo rule? Well, personally, I own one piece of clothing that has a visible logo on it. It's this button down Oxford shirt by Charles Tewitt. You'll see it has a very subtle, barely visible logo. I bought this online and I didn't actually notice the logo until it already arrived. But there are three reasons why I don't really have a problem with this. Firstly, it's barely noticeable. I mean, it's embroidered in the same color stitching as the shirt itself. So you can't really see it until you get very close up. Secondly, it's not really their logo and it doesn't have any writing on it. It's just an emblem that nobody would really recognize. So thirdly, yeah, nobody is gonna know which brand this is associated with. So nobody is gonna think that I'm trying to show off in the same way that they might if I were wearing maybe a polo by Ralph Lauren dress shirt. So gentlemen, now it's your turn. I want to hear from you in the comments. Do you own any clothes with visible logos? If so, what do you like about that piece? Do you wish it didn't have any logo at all? And for the gentlemen who completely avoid logos, would you ever buy a piece that has a logo if there were some other things that you really, really liked about it? If you're wondering what video to watch next, may I recommend this one I made last week about five old money style variations. Whether you choose to wear logos or not, these different takes on the old money aesthetic will help you turn this trend into your own unique style. So until the next one, thank you as always, gentlemen, for watching.